Becker Tower has been a part of the campus since day one. Many students and faculty members have spent a lot of time there since it was built in September of 1897. But after all these years, some rooms are off limits to students. Paige Schreiber has the story of two students, one that would like to stay anonymous and the other, Spencer Brewster, an alum who broke into the tower. An archivist and an artist also give their insight on the history of the tower and the graffiti in it. I think it was around 53 that they had to remove the actual steeple because the tower itself was becoming structurally unsound. And so the steeple was about ready to collapse. That was Randy Newman, the director of the United Brethren Historical Center, known also as Heinz University's archivist. So they removed that and then um, put buttresses up to support the walls. And it was basically unsafe at that point. And then 89, I think, is when they renovated the tower and then put the, the steeple back on and then shored up the walls to make sure that they weren't as unsafe as they were previously. He has been working for Huntington since 1982 and knows a lot about the history of the building and the fun stories that come with it. tower itself, like I said, they used to have a bell up there that they would ring at, at with the win home games, but um, there were some enterprising students who would get up there and ring it early in the morning. And um, the president of the college, Dr. Baker at that time, did not like being woken up in the middle of the night <laughs> with, with the tower ringing. So he instructed the maintenance department to weld the clapper to the bell. More than once, students took a cow up to the third floor of Becker Hall as a prank because cows go upstairs okay, but they hate coming downstairs. So maintenance would struggle getting the cow down and out of the building. I know it was just lots of students would sneak up there frequently and sign their names on the walls. And I don't know, they've done some tower re- reconstruction lately that they found some names that they've um were like like people i remember from the past i'm student a and i tried to break into becker tower student a is a junior at hu and told me she would like to remain anonymous just so she wouldn't get into trouble for her attempt well i've always thought it'd be interesting to see huntington from that view and i've always been curious what's up there so the door to get up there there's two doors one was unlocked and i was like hmm Let me just see if I can go up here and check it out. (laughs) She said she was up there to help organize the storage closet in Becker, which is connected to the tower door. She was alone and just thought, why not? I used a bobby pin because I had my hair up in a bun that day. And so I bent the bobby pin in half and stuck in one side and tried to twist it until I could hear it click and unlock. Didn't work. Student A says she has broken into her house in her dorm room door with bobby pins before. She thought that if she broke into an older lock, it would be easier. She said she wasn't really expecting to get in, but was kind of hoping it'd work this time too. I honestly, if somebody like would have came and yelled at me for trying, would have been like, yo, I just wanted to know what was up here. Sorry. Like, it didn't really matter to me if I got in trouble. I just wanted to see what was up there. So the curiosity got the best of me. So I think my attempt was worth the risk. After talking to student A and going up into the tower, I thought it'd be interesting is to see if HU's archivist, Randy Newman, knew what was written on the walls. Casino is was a actual house where a group of students would live. It was like campus housing. At one time, it was a family residence. There were several houses around campus, such as Casino and Omega and White House and Brick House and um, Green Gables. Newman had also told me in an email he had noticed Jamie Hoffman's name and said she is now an English teacher out of high school. Joel Rausch is a former congressman and his son used to live in the Rausch house and that he knew Mark Howell and Tammy Yoakum, but he had no idea what they were up to nowadays. In the tower, I recognize the name in Black Sharpie of a Huntington alum who graduated in 2017. Spencer Brewster described his experience of breaking into Becker Tower in an email interview. He wanted to break in because it was a tradition that he had always heard of and wanted to be a part of it. He was a youth ministry major, which means he had no idea how to get around Becker at all. So he decided to recruit a friend to help him find the tower entrance. Brewster took an old trick that his dad had told him to use that was helpful at work when he needed to get in without his keys. So he took a piece of plastic the size of a key and had it warm enough for it to mold to the lock so it would open the door. He said once he got up there, it was completely different than what he was expecting. That it was almost like a storage area, but really dirty. But what he thought was really cool was to see all the names of professors and other people who work for the university and to add his name with them. Brewster also said it was totally worth the thrill and the bragging rights to say he's been up there when most students haven't. It was an experience he was proud to be a part of. But why do we write our names on buildings? 
I asked Julie McQueen, a local South Bend artist, what she thought about graffiti, specifically tagging. Tagging is um, when you put your name on a building and it could be when someone donates to a university and then the university is putting their name on that building to just show reverence to what they did. Um, and yes, tagging could be as simple as writing your name on a building in a Sharpie. McQueen has been an artist for 10 years now, and she explained why people put their names on things and specifically why people join their names together in a heart. I guess just to show that you include them in your life so much that bringing that, your two names together in a heart shows that you care enough about them to tell everybody but it's also to just bring about the fondness that you have for someone together in that heart. Some people just want recognition. Some, sometimes it's just a matter of being a little bit devious and just to show somebody that you belong there. I'm Paige Schreiber for The Huntingtonian.